Hello, my name is Doriana Feliciano, and today we will be delving into the life, legacy, and the structure of the DNA molecule with James Watson. James Watson was born April 6, 1928 in Chicago, Illinois, to a mother, Margaret Jean Mitchell Watson, who was a tailor from Scotland, and father, James D. Watson, a businessman of colonial English settlers. His family was never religious, and he birdwatched with his father as a child and considered studying ornithology. Now, as a child for his entertainment, he always read the World Almanac and he attended Horace Mann Grammar School. He won $100 prize money as a quiz kid on the popular radio program Quiz Kids, and he used this money to buy binoculars to continue birdwatching with his father. During his non-working days, James Watson spent a majority of his time studying the structures of wildlife specimen as a teenager, and he attended South Shore High School from 1939 to 1943, and he pursued studies in zoology and the biological makeup of organisms. From 1943 to 1947, at the age of 15, he studied at the University of Chicago under the Gifted Youngster Program, who awarded him a tuition scholarship. He considered studying zoology and biology, but decided to go to graduate school and study to become curator of ornithology at the Museum of Natural History. In 1947, he obtained a bachelor's degree in zoology, and in that same year, he attended school at Indiana University. His original plan was to pursue a PhD in zoology, researching the evolutionary makeup of organisms. However, in 1946, he read Erwin Schrodinger's book, What is Life?, and that inspired him to pursue genetics instead of ornithology. He became a graduate student at Indiana University from 1947 to 1950, and he began working as a Ph.D. in Salvador Luria's lab. After earning a Ph.D. in 1950, he studied in Europe, first in Copenhagen alongside Hermann Kalkar, a biochemist, and his thesis was called The Biological Properties of X-Ray Inactivated Bacteriophage. Watson finally understood that DNA was the key to understanding life. Because of this, he dedicated his studies in Europe to solving DNA structure. Next, he worked at the University of Cambridge in the Cavendish Laboratory in England, and he shared his office with Francis Crick, who was also interested in the structure of DNA. Both were assigned other projects not related at the time, though. After a while, Watson and Crick decided to focus their research on the molecular makeup of the DNA molecule, and they used findings from other scientists, like Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallography, to piece together the structure of the double helix. The diffraction patterns were key clues to the DNA molecule structure. This is an image of Franklin's X-ray crystallography, which identified polynucleotide backbones comprising the 5' prime and 3' prime ends of the DNA molecule. Four nitrogenous bases were identified as well, and the X shape of the DNA under microscope gave clues about the twisted nature of the DNA molecule. Now, because of the twisted nature of the DNA molecule, Watson and Crick discovered that the ends are anti-parallel, and in 1953, Watson and Crick officially described and modeled the structure of the DNA and its nucleic base pairing. Materials used to construct the DNA molecule were 3D model building structures in the lab using reference images from X-ray diffraction photographs. They also described the genetic makeup of DNA in terms of nucleotides and their binding habits. And they determined that DNA was responsible for transferring the genetic information across generations. In 1956, Watson and Crick submitted their findings to the journal Nature, which was published on April 25th and was titled Molecular Structure of Nucleic Acids, a Structure for Deoxyribose Nucleic Acid. And in it, they described the nucleic acid-base pairing that constitutes for the shape of DNA. From 1956 to 76, Watson accepted a position at Harvard and served as faculty at the biology department. His focus of research was on RNA and its role in the transfer of genetic information, and he promoted his research in molecular biology to students and faculty for 10 years. In 1962, James Watson won the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine for describing and modeling the genetic material of DNA. He shared this prize with Crick and Maurice Wilkins, who, with Rosalind Franklin, provided the data on which the structure was based on. Soon after, he shifted his research to studying cancer and served as president for 10 years at Cold Spring Harvard Laboratory. He contributed to the promotion of the Human Genome Project at the National Institutes of Health while still directing. He was promoted chancellor until 2007 for racial commenting. After resigning at the age of 79, he wrote his first textbook, The Molecular Biology of the Gene, in 1965, and it set new standards for biology textbooks. It became the first widely used university textbook on molecular biology. In 1968, he wrote The Double Helix, which reminisces about his upbringing and how his love of genetics shaped his goals for the future. It also addresses his theories on how DNA can transfer genes that code for human illnesses. It was rated 7 out of 100 best nonfiction books. 
After his retirement, he continued writing papers like The Lancet in 2014 about human diseases. In 1968, he married Elizabeth Lewis and had two sons, Rufus in 1970 and Duncan in 1972. Due to Rufus having schizophrenia, James continued studying human diseases. Because of Watson's research, it was concluded that DNA is the center of genetic coding within an organism which can be shared across generations. The discovery helped to produce new and powerful scientific techniques as well, like recombinant DNA research, genetic engineering, and monoclonal antibodies during the 70s and 80s. Thank you so much for your time. Here is my literature-sided slide. I am Doriana Feliciano once more, and I hope you learned more about James Watson than you had originally known before this slideshow. Have a great day!